Welcome to the Existential Edge Podcast, presented by the United States Association for Small Business and Entrepreneurship. How is entrepreneurship transforming university environments? What are its most compelling lessons? How can an entrepreneurship program make maximum impact on its ecosystem and change the lives of students and others in the process? Join Patrick J. Murphy, Goodrich Endowed Chair, Professor, and Director of the Entrepreneurship Program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham as he hosts leading entrepreneurs from across the country and beyond for provocative and insightful discussions of these and other questions. Welcome, everybody, to the Existential Edge podcast. We are on episode two. And this is the podcast that is uh, dedicated to taking deep dives into entrepreneurship education. We're talking with real entrepreneurs who have been there and done that and who have also been students. And we have hard hitting conversations with them to glean some insights to improve and evolve entrepreneurship education. Today, we have uh, Alan Wu as our guest. He is, um, he's worked for a couple of the biggest tech companies in the world. He's also a serial entrepreneur, and he has a lot of really interesting views about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship education. And we're gonna have a really great conversation with him. We're gonna get to know him a little bit here in a moment, and then we're gonna talk about his entrepreneurial activities. And then in the final short section of our program, we'll talk about some lessons and implications for entrepreneurship education. Alan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Patrick. Good to be here. Really appreciate it. You got it. We're, we're excited to hear from you. And, and so we'll go ahead and jump right into it, Alan. If you could, um, tell us a little bit about your background. We're going to get into your venture here in just a little bit. But what we really want to do first is get to know your personality, character, values, anything that makes you who you are that steered you toward this entrepreneurial path. And you can go back into your childhood if you want, but we really want to get a good personal insight into who you are. Sure. Um, well, gosh, you know, well, I, I can start with where I'm from originally, which is the Midwest. Um, I was uh, born in LaGrange, grew up in um, Valparaiso, Indiana, uh, so Midwestern at heart, um, and uh, eventually moved out to the West Coast and went to University of Washington for my bachelor's degree. Um, I would say that growing up in the Midwest, um, you know, my parents, they had immigrated here from Taiwan and, uh, growing up, um, just seeing them work incredibly hard as entrepreneurs themselves, small business owners. I mean, they had to do it out of necessity because, um, you know, they couldn't land a job in a traditional company because of, uh, you know, their communication skills, right? It's just not something that you know, coming in as an immigrant into the U.S., uh, that, uh, you know, the cars aren't really stacked in your favor when it comes to that. Um, and so, uh, you know, growing up, I've always seen my parents work hard. They would, you know, wake up at 6 a.m., uh, leave work at 11 p.m., um, you know, open the restaurant, close the restaurant. It was, uh, you know, just a uh, kind of, I guess, the, you know, they came here to chase the American dream of being able to, uh, you know, be successful one day. And, and uh, you know, there was a, uh, a real lesson that I learned throughout all of that, which is, you know, part of my values is to always work hard and to, you know, always be frugal and everything. So, um, you know, at a high level, I would say that's that probably started my um, uh, kind of makeup into the world of uh, being an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, so, it, with that in mind, um, I've always known that I wanted to be in business at some level and to, you know, my, my dream was to, you know, accumulate wealth and, you know, be able to retire on the beach someday, you know, like the traditional um, uh, dreams and visions of, of uh, what a, the American success uh, dream looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, so in, in that light, I, I went to school at UW um, and uh, naturally I thought I'd go into business school um, because that's, you know, if you want to be good in business, go, go to business school. Um, and uh, so I worked, did my credits, tried to, uh, you know, prepare for all the tests and everything to get into business school. And um, lo and behold, the day came where I had to do the test and um, apply for it. And uh, turns out I got rejected from business school. 
And it was pretty devastating for me um, in uh, on one side of the angle, um, just because, you know, up until that point um, in my life, I think it was probably 19 at that time, I, I had always thought and knew that I wanted to be in business. And for, you know, a very big institution to tell you that you're not good enough or that, um, you know, you don't have the chops to make it, um, you know, that that was a big blow. Right. And luckily I had applied to two programs. You know, I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. I also applied to the construction management program, which ironically is more difficult. They take fewer students. Um, there's more uh, credits that you need to get both in science and business. Um, but I got into that program. So uh, and which was also funny, you end up earning more out of that program right out of college and you get management experience <laughs> out of, out of uh, college. Um, and so it ended up working out for me, um, uh, but I'll, I'll never forget that. And I think that's one of the things that really um, stood out for me was, you know, on, on one side you could be told no, but on the other side, um, it it could there could be a silver lining in life that leads to something more, right? And so I think that was for me the first lesson. Um, and eventually, you know, I, I decided to. I mean, I you know I went into commercial real estate. Um, uh, with my construction management degree. And I thought it was a, a natural path for me to take because, um, you know, real estate is a very important part about building wealth. And so, you know, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad growing up. In fact, um, short story, um, you know, I remember very vividly one of the, the reasons why I decided I won't go into business was one day my dad, when I was 18 years old, we were living in a one bedroom apartment with um, my parents who, were, who were, had a mattress on the floor. I was roommates with my grandma. Um, and uh, we were stuck in this one bedroom and he had given me a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And he said, had I read this book 10 years ago, our lives would be completely different. And my dad is a stubborn guy. Wow. He, he never admits that he's wrong. Um, I shouldn't say never. He rarely does. Uh, nowadays, he does more. But uh, uh, for me, that was very impactful. Um, and I it also that was also the moment that I started um, my love for reading. Uh, specifically nonfiction books as a as a, a vehicle for growing and um, yeah you know, never looked back since then and and so that instance really um, you know made an impact on me like big lessons was you know get in real estate other other lesson was surround yourself with uh, or you are the the five people you surround yourself with or spend the most time with mm -hmm. and so choose your your peer peers uh, wisely and your network wisely and so that really influenced me into this whole proximity is power kind of concept. Um, and so for me, getting into business school was part of that. But then, um, you know, going into commercial real estate um, uh, was kind of the path that life brought me down. And then when the uh, real estate bubble burst, I graduated in 2007. It's right around the time I met you, Patrick. Um, and the real estate tanked. And, uh, you know, all of these, you know, big construction companies were laying off people. I think that there was like over a thousand employees laid off in the company I was at. Um, I was one of them. And so I took that time to really reflect into what do I want to do next. And uh, I had a short stint in recruiting um, because I was always fascinated with um, the job search because, um, you know, if you if you do the job search right, I shouldn't, I mean, there's multiple ways to do it, but in my mind, if I, if I did it effectively, then essentially you wouldn't, later in life, you would have no worries because you wouldn't have to worry about being unemployed, right? It's almost like a mm -hmm. life skill that should be taught is how to land a job effectively. And by effectively, that doesn't mean Googling stuff on, you know, how to land a job. It's, it's really finding the best of the best in the world and modeling what they do versus, right. um, sticking with conventional knowledge because if you do that then you're just going to be part of every you know be, be like everyone else and that's right not how you so everybody um alan thank you that was really awesome introduction to who you are i have a couple of probing questions you're starting sure. to get into the entrepreneurial opportunity and everybody as you know from the program description he has a project called job lander which is about careers and finding job opportunities and everything, we're, which we're going to get into in the next segment. And you're starting to get into that right now, Alan. But I want to ask you, you said a couple of things that are really interesting. So you're talking about reading and a love of reading. I've actually seen entrepreneurs online recently post things like, I don't really want to waste my time reading books. I prefer to watch 
YouTube videos and things like that, which I personally think is terrible advice. And you did mention one book that you read. Could you rattle off a couple of other books and say a little bit more about um, your philosophy as it relates to the importance of reading books? Yeah, um, I think it's absolutely critical. Like uh, in terms of you, you look at the most successful people in the world, reading is a very much um, embedded into one of the habits that these individuals have. I think, uh, you know, um, Bill Gates reads, you know, hundreds of books a year and he can do it very, very quickly uh, with superhuman um, kind of efficiency and, and memory. Um, my personal philosophy on reading is that it's, there's very few things that can really give you decades worth of wisdom in a, in a compact and concise method of um, consuming. It's almost the equivalent of if you had the matrix, right? And if you remember that scene with Neo and, you know, I know Kung Fu when he, you know, plugs the, the wire in the back, like books is probably the, the closest thing that you have. Reading books is the closest thing you have to that type of um, knowledge transfer or wisdom transfer. Now, what you do with that knowledge is different, but yeah, um, I would say that is that is uh, kind of the first tier. Um, books that I love, um, you know, I'd have to say like, you know, Four Hour Work Week is a classic. Um, uh, How to Win Friends, uh, Influence People was was popular for me. Um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, lots of wisdom in that one. Um, I mean, these are real old kind of uh, you know, yeah. business classics. Um, yeah, I think there's, um, there's a ton of them that are more like for, uh, more recent, uh, individuals like, um, that are into entrepreneurship, like lean startup, um, running lean. Um, those are all very good. Uh, uh value proposition canvas is another one that I love. Um, I could just keep going. There's tons of books that sure. I've read. Sure. Um, and you yeah. said you preferred nonfiction. Is that right? Do you read any fiction at all? I, I don't, but I don't I don't necessarily think that that's great practice. I do think that reading fiction helps with creativity and you should do it. Um, I just whenever it, it takes a lot of energy for me to focus on reading. So I, I when I when I do exert that that um, energy and attention, I like to do uh, uh, read nonfiction usually. That's great. OK, so we have some good insight into your character. Thank you for that. Um, as a way to wrap up this first segment, if you could. Give us a rundown of your resume, like um, first job, second job, third job. You've worked at some famous companies like I alluded to in the beginning. You're still at one of them now. Give us a rundown of your, your resume and then kind of finish with um, a brief introduction to your entrepreneurial project. And then we'll take a deep dive into that in the next section. Yeah, sure. So uh, as I mentioned, I started off in commercial real estate uh, working for a company called Opus. Um, uh, I think uh, after that, I uh, went on to a recruiting firm called Volt, um, which they did technical staffing and recruiting. Um, from there, I was actually uh, recruited by uh, a life insurance company called eFinancial that was owned by Fidelity Life. And um, uh, that's where I got my first real stint in, in marketing and learning uh, digital marketing, partner marketing, television marketing, SEO. Um, and then uh, while I was there, I also had a side hustle of uh, building video games. So I, I started a, an indie game studio um, that had, I think, like 26 freelancers that I had uh, hired worldwide um, to help build you know, these little mini games that you could play on your mobile phone. Um, it was through that experience, combined with my experience marketing, that Amazon caught hold of me. And so I ended up um, take, accepting a role at Amazon um, and that was, gosh, 2013. Um, and I worked there for two and a half years, had a really successful career um, early on, and uh, went on to Microsoft for a little while. Um, and uh, out of Microsoft, I was working with um, developer experience team where uh, we would basically work to influence um, game developers, enterprise developers in adopting a lot of Microsoft technologies. Shortly after that, I came back to Amazon um, for various reasons, one of them is, you know, Amazon, I really do believe, uh, em uh, embodies the entrepreneurial kind of uh, culture that uh, uh, facilitates like think big um, mindsets and, and uh, you know, moving fast and everything that I value personally. Um, and that's where I am today. It's been, gosh, five, eight years of Amazon overall. And, uh, you know, today I work for 
uh, for Amazon. So what are you doing right now at, at Amazon? Uh, I'm uh, head of growth marketing for the Kindle team. So uh, specifically e-readers and uh, the devices for e-readers. That's great. And that aligns nicely with your interest in reading books like you um, it is. talked yes. about earlier, right? OK, Absolutely. and then give us a little teaser about Joblander as a way to wrap up this segment. And then um, we'll take a deep dive into that in just a moment. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of my favorite projects that I've been working on is uh, something called Joblander. Um, simply put, Joblander is a way for you to tell employer, a potential employer, your story uh, because your story is more than your resume, right? And um, we can go deeper into that, but essentially it's, um, you know, we're, we're disrupting this, this one-dimensional age-old, you know, piece of paper that uh, for the last 50 years has, has uh, uh, been the crux of recruiting. And, uh, you know, uh, and personally and, and professionally, I think it's, it's time to, to up-level that. And that's, that's what Joblander is working on. Nice. And we will learn a lot more about that in the next segment.